Welcome to another Lightstream Creator Academy video. My name is Brandon, and in today's video, we're talking about microphones and how to improve the quality of them, regardless of whether you're using a headset microphone or even like an XLR professional studio level microphone. Let's get into this video. Whether you're live streaming from your console to Lightstream or even using it on a web browser, it doesn't matter what you're doing, video really is improved by having great microphone quality. And it's one of those things that if you can upgrade something, you need to start with your microphone. But today we're gonna to talk about mic etiquette and how to improve your sound with what you have to make sure that your viewers get the best experience of your content. To help improve that, we're gonna be implementing two simple things. Number one is proper microphone etiquette, and number two is actually the gain or actually the sensitivity of how well your microphone picks up the sound that you're giving it. So let's focus on microphone etiquette, which is number one. To give you a good picture of what good mic etiquette is, I'm gonna show you that by turning sideways and showing you how I would position my microphone, regardless of whatever it is, headset or not. I'll show you that with a headset in a moment. First, if you are using a microphone like this, one of the first things you don't wanna do is number one, to talk directly into the capsule. Now, most microphones have a kind of a filter or something over the top of it. Sometimes it's built on the inside of the actual microphone and a lot of headsets do on the inside or they have a felt on the outside. For this one, in this case, you can actually see that it's something I can remove and you can see the sensor of the diaphragm right here that it's actually picking up the sound. And if I'm talking directly into it, you're gonna get all the pa 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 plosives and all of those moments that are gonna be able to not create great sound. That's why one of these are great to be able to remove any of those plosives or those big pa 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 pa, the airy feel that comes from the sound. By placing this on there, it's going to knock down any of the air that directly hits it. And also, I'm going to mitigate it by instead of speaking directly into that sensor, I'm going to talk over the top of what that sensor would be. So right here is that sensor, right? I'm gonna be talking directly over the top. Now I keep saying sensor, and yes, it's a diaphragm, and some people might correct, but the truth is, I want you to think of it about sensitivity. Here's where it is, and if I'm talking over it, all of that wind, the air that's coming out of my mouth is crossing over the top of the microphone rather than going directly into that capsule and picking up all of that extra noise and sound and things that we don't want. Also, in that same case, if we place it too low, we're going to get a lot more chesty, boomy sounds just because of the acoustics of what our chest does. And if we place it above the sound source, we're going to get a lot more of that nasally high sound that we would get from the acoustics that our nose naturally produces. <clears throat> now, yes, I have this microphone on an arm, so I can kind of position it where I would like it and it move with me. But what if you have a microphone that's just kind of on its own little stand that just sits on the table? Well, the best way to do it is to always position it as close to the source as possible and make sure you aim the actual diaphragm or sensor at the source. And I'll show you that with this one specifically. This is an Elgato microphone and you can see that there's the actual diaphragm and it's aimed up directly at me. And so here is that Elgato microphone and I have it as close or far up on the table as I can aiming directly up at me with that diaphragm aiming at my face so that I can have as much sound as close as possible to that microphone. Staying on mic etiquette, let's actually talk about placement of that microphone. A lot of people will position the microphone really far from the source. So here's where it is. It's maybe like two, three inches from the end of my mouth to this microphone to be able to achieve this kind of sound. And now I've pushed that microphone out of frame and you can't see it anymore, but it is a good two feet away from me. And you can see how much this microphone has changed in its sound. Yes, you don't see the microphone in the frame, but is this an attractive sound? I don't think so. And when it comes to microphones, you wanna be able to bring that up and get it as close to the source of sound as possible. Now, staying on that same thread, there are microphones that are called condenser microphones. This one's dynamic, this one's condenser, and these I actually genuinely recommend, no, what you're listening to now is actually the headset microphone of this headset, and we're going to talk about the placement specifically for a microphone like this. A lot of these have an adjustable piece where you can move it up and down, in and out, even forward and back, depending on your model. But let's talk about if we move it too close. If we get it really close right here, we can speak softer so that you can hear everything. However, if we get loud, you can start hearing it peek through the microphone, and it starts getting really staticky just because 
because of the placement. And a lot of times you can't control this microphone volume. And so placement here honestly adjusts not only the sound, but also the volume of itself. Now, if you're getting a lot of breathing or air sounds, you can start taking this microphone and you move it down just a little bit so that you're breathing past the actual microphone. But if you start getting a lot of that, if you're kind of breathing down from your nose and hearing that sound, you can actually move it just above your mouth and be able to bypass any of those air sounds as well. Now, again, if you move it lower, you're going to get more of this rumbly sound from your chest and higher, you're going to get more of a nasally sound. Adjust it and figure out what works best for you. And again, if I put this really far away, you can start to hear the difference in quality of that because the sound source is so much farther away from that sensor. So as I move it closer, you're going to get a much better quality of sound. So always think about where the placement of this microphone is, even if it's on your head or you're using one of these standalone microphones. Step two is actually the microphone volume or gain. And depending on if it's connected to a computer or even your console, you're gonna be able to see these levels. On the PlayStation, you can actually go into the settings and see what it looks like and see if the microphone volume is falling within these safe limits. And even for the Xbox, it has an auto gain to make sure that the people that you're talking to can hear yourself and you can adjust the microphone volume for stream. But on a computer, the best way to test it is actually a free tool from Adobe Podcast. And I'll Leave a link for this down in the description. What you do is you can click start, you can hit allow, you can hit allow this time, whatever the case, and you can click test this microphone and read what it says here. It'll tell you distance to microphone, gain, how much background noise and echo, and be able to adjust any of that that you might be able to do. So let's go ahead and click test mic. How is my microphone setup and placement? And what you can see here is it actually says that my distance to microphone is good. Yes, there's not a lot of background noise or echo, but my gain is too high. So I'm actually gonna turn my gain down, which you can do inside Windows or Mac settings. I actually have a control knob for it in front of me. And I'm gonna click test again and see what happens. How is my microphone setup and placement? And there it is, I adjusted my microphone gain using my computer, and now it says that my voice is crisp and clear. This is a really good base to get started with. However, make sure you're listening to recordings of what you're doing and adjusting that volume up and down depending on what you need. Thank you so much for watching this video, and click on any of the videos on screen now to be able to learn more about Lightstream Studio. Thank you, and we'll see you over there.